you know, I said to her, because, you know, we're using a reasonable volume because there was mm. several years of filler in there. Um, and, you know, you're putting in four or five mils of uh, higher layers in the diluent. But of course, you're going to look like you've got anaphylaxis. Well, as you're doing it, not just after, but as you're doing it, the lips are blowing up like a balloon. mentioned that you know because of the source of, of the bacteria or the source of the highlays that um you do have things like reactions and people having different tolerance levels to it so there's like lots of you know rumors around that you know if you're allergic to bee stings you're also going to be allergic to, to high to hyaluronidase uh, yeah. is, is that sort of true and, and then sort of i mean i've had highlays a couple of times and i've noticed that you know the first time i was pretty okay with it then the second time like, i actually developed you know itchiness um yeah. you know becoming a little bit inflamed and irritated the area was a bit sore mm -hmm. so it seems like my first instance wasn't as bad but my second one was i mean yeah. is, that, is that sort of normal yeah so i'll talk about the beast being more yeah. thing situation first then we can talk about the sort of instance of reaction so um if we look at being wasp stings um there are lots of proteins in bee and wasp stings and hyaluronidase is one of them. And <clears throat> I found a paper by a lady called um, Emily Keller and she did a lot of work on this. And what she was basically saying that is if you have had anaphylaxis to a bee or wasp sting, then your incidence of having anaphylaxis to a further bee or wasp sting is 60%. Now, if you're thinking, right, well, it could be the hyaluronidase, in that beer roasting, but you don't know for sure, your maximum risk from giving them how you're on is up to 60%. Mm. So you've got an up to 60% risk of anaphylaxis with how you're on days. And then there was another part that talked about large localized reactions. So large localized reactions are obviously when you get stung and it's not just you've got a welt in the area, which people often think is an allergy. You have to always drill down with your patient. What do you mean by allergy? What happened when you were stung? Um, a large localized reaction would be like the whole arm or a part of the trunk or whatever you were stung and apparently the incidence of anaphylaxis to a further sting is five percent so again if you think well it could be the hyaluronidase so then you would think well my maximum risk of giving hyaluronidase may result in a five percent risk of anaphylaxis so i sort of work off that because that's the only thing that i could find so you know unless people get specific allergy testing to the hyaluronidase component, then you're never going to know for sure whether it's the hyaluronidase and the sting. So that's that's the first thing. And then the second thing is, um, I believe that there's two things that are happening with hyaluronidase. There's either an allergic component to it, or there's it's an irritation reaction. It's actually nothing to do with allergy. So I think there's two things that are happening. And the reason why I think that is because when it's been used in other indications, like when it's been used to inject around the eye or, and you know, there's lots of papers on, you know, uh, cases of, well, I see lot, lots of case studies, there's like 60 something. Um, so the incidence of allergy should be the same across all indications. It shouldn't just all of a sudden be really huge in aesthetics. So a lot of people report swelling and irritation. So when I did a questionnaire on this, I surveyed 650 injectors and 52% say, said that significant swelling and irritation were common for them. So you can't just all of a sudden have an allergy rate that supersedes any other indication. So I think that there's two things that are happening and it's difficult to know which one is happening. I think with you, David, if you're having a worsening um, sort of symptoms on secondary exposure, that's probably more linked to a sensitization, so an allergy, because it's a protein, it's, it's slightly foreign to the body. So, you know, that, that that could happen. But if you actually look back to the sort of the incidence of allergy and other indications, um, it's somewhere between 0 0.03 and 0 0.13. So it depends on um, which case report you're looking at but it's low and it's not just type one anaphylaxis. It's not just your type one reactions, it's delayed reactions to your type four. So there's a whole kind of um, a cluster of allergic responses, type one, type four, and the majority of them in the literature have actually been delayed onset reactions, swelling, rashes, that kind of thing, rather than anaphylaxis. Yeah. So, um, so I think, 
we've got some work to do on trying to separate what is an allergy and what's just an irritation reaction because in fact only last night I saw something on on social media where um there was really swollen lips and which, which then meant that the war face was swollen it, it looks like you know that person could be you know developing anaphylaxis but they were in their car taking a picture <laughs> so you know the clinical signs are not you know you know they're, they're not showing any other signs that there's systemic involvement so you know, I think that um, the swelling, especially when you're using even pharmaceutical grades, um, because it is still different, it's, it's derived from animals. You know, yeah. um, we know that the drug is irritant anyway. We know that it's irritant. So I think we have to be careful what we label allergy. Mm. Yeah, I, I, just, I had a, sorry. I was just, oh, just going to say, um, I, uh, antihistamines, would that help taking them sort of prophylactically before you'd have that? Well, have actually, funny you should say that. So now I... Um, I pay attention to what's in the medical history quite closely. And if somebody's atopic of, of, you know, of any description, whether it's even hay fever, if I'm going to use hyaluronidase, I will get them to use their, their antihistamines for five days before to just, because I think, well, antihistamines are so inoculate, doesn't, they're so safe. And if I can just do a, a histamine blockade, then that's not going to hurt, is it? So that's, yeah. that's what I do in practice. Oh, well, I get allergies from time to time. So maybe that's why I develop that sense. You should try it. Try it yeah. and see, see if it helps. Okay. That's really good advice. Sorry, Jay. Yeah, no, I was going to say, I, I treated a girl literally yesterday uh, for filler dissolving, not my work, and she's actually booked in for a lip lift in two weeks here in Sydney, and you know, she admitted herself her lips were, yeah, they, they weren't great, and so <laughs> Sorry, is my mic you, not you keep moving around your boisterous um, so Andy's going to get I'm very upset. To, I'm trying to look at you and give uh, you the eyes. Uh, Andy's going to be very upset. <laughs> our our uh, uh, sound engineer is going to be very cross with Jake. Sorry, everyone. Um, yeah, and and exactly like you said, you know, I said to her because you know we're using a reasonable volume because there was mm. several years of filler in there, um, and you know you're putting in four or five mils of uh, hyalase in the diluent. And of course, you're going to look like you've got anaphylaxis. Well, as you're doing it, not just after, but as you're doing it, the lips is blowing up like a balloon. And I said to her, yeah. you know, I know you're, you're going to freak out when you look in the mirror. It won't be there in an hour or two once that fluid sort of disperses. But yeah. an inexperienced injector might shit themselves and think, yeah. oh, my God, yeah, they do. this is the start yeah. of anaphylaxis. So exactly what you said, if, if the diagnosis of allergy is swelling and irritation, well, I've just put a needle in the lips 400 times. <laughs> and, and they're swollen so with a very irritant drug yeah yes yeah. have you had any patients go actually like how they look with the high in them or oh, swollen and geez <laughs> no they that tend could be the, that no. could be the new thing no <laughs> definitely not <laughs> i know hey, you're crazy for a night out. <laughs> thanks so much for watching the podcast clip you can listen to the whole audio episode of the podcast on your favorite podcast app on apple Podcasts or spotify and please also leave us a review on the podcast app if you like what we do please smash the like button consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get notified when we release new content 